Of course, text as well. 81333, start your message with the word Kent. Of course, as well as working from home, one of the things we saw a lot during the pandemic were memes. They kept us amused. They kept us busy on WhatsApp or social media. I mean, maybe ones like this published by uh, Politics Joe. Nobody told me it was a party. It looked like a party with cheese and wine and stuff. We'll find that a party. It was confidential. Now it has the potential to bring me, bring me down. I mean, whatever you think about it politically, very, very clever. Or even this one by uh, led by donkeys, where they pretended the prime minister was in line of duty. On screen, I am reference LBD1. LBD1 is an email sent by your principal private secretary, Martin Reynolds, inviting more than 100 Downing Street staff to attend a party on the evening of May 20th, 2020. All that subject for an interview, for, for an investigation by Sue Gray. We've investigated it. And the facts are plain for everyone to see. Again, very, very clever. But what impact does it have when an MP becomes a meme? Does it do them any harm? Let's discuss. Dr Liam McLaughlin is a lecturer in politics at the University of Manchester and he's published a paper. I love this. It's called By Any Memes Necessary. It's a brilliant title, Liam. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Hey um, there, Anna. Um, my first thought, I suppose, is, is this really anything new? Because there's been satirical cartoons since, what, 17-something. You know, people oh, yeah. have always derided politicians and, you know, done little cartoons on pieces of paper. I guess this is just a, a technological way of doing it. It's more than that in some ways. It's, uh-huh. um, you know, old cartoons, it was traditionally, you know, your newspapers, they'd present something and you'd, you'd laugh at it. Memes are something different in the fact it's kind of democratised this type of humour. You know, you've, you've, the, the, the memes you've just demonstrated, they're obviously wonderfully brilliant, really yes. creative, and they take a really high skill set. But most memes are just simply someone opening up an image, putting some text in it, sharing it, and sharing above. So it is different in that diff- in that kind of slight way. It's, it's not just this top-down level of humour. It's very much grassroots bottom-up, which I makes see. it so distinct and interesting. Yeah, yeah. So does that mean it has a different impact then? Certainly. And it's also, it tells you something different when someone shares it. You know, memes are... They're very authentic, aren't they? They're yeah. not just something that someone's created. You know, you know, this is something, you know, memes are most effective um, when people believe in them. You know, mm. people share them because they think they're accurate in some way. Yes. They agree with our kind of pre-existing consciousness in some ways. And that, you know, that's what makes them special and more effective as well. They resonate. And I suppose the f- yeah. I, we're all the same, aren't we? The first thing you do when you see something brilliant and funny that makes you laugh is you're like, right, right, how can I share it, right? We just want to yeah, share it. Yeah. And what about the, the politicians then? Can they laugh this kind of stuff off or actually? Oh, certainly. Yeah. I mean, you can look at Boris Johnson. Mm. He is no stranger to memes. You know, mm. everyone at some point, most of your listeners, I'm sure, have seen the memes of Boris Johnson stuck on a zip line. Um, or yep. him, you know, rugby tackling a teenager <laughs> or a child. Um, and he's come off these quite well. And even during kind of the, we can look back at 2017, this is when we really started seeing political memes come about. Yeah. You know, political memes were really important for Jeremy Corbyn in sharing his message. And likewise, they were disastrous for Theresa May because they, you know, they locked into what people thought of each respective leader. And again, they were used um, in the 2019 campaign, but kind of more tactically. You know, you had Boris Johnson creating lo-fi beats on YouTube, for example, as a bit of a meme. Um, You know, they and he was also, I'm not sure if anyone really clicked, clocked onto this, but he was, you know, doing things that were very memeable. You know, when he made that cup of tea in the uh, 2019 walking through Conservative HQ, Mm -hmm. he put the milk in first. You know, that was a deliberate tactic because Uh, people thought, well, that's a memeable content. uh, You know, they were doing things to make things into memes um, and they're very useful. Um, I think what's happened more recently is that it's, you know, they've not really been able to really control the memes from the top down, from, you know, the party's leadership central. Um, And what's kind of really spiralled out of control for them is the fact that people have authentically, you know, not decided that Boris Johnson's this bit of a buffoon, which is kind of what the old memes used to really resonate on, um, but really that he was a liar. And that's what more of the more recent memes have really started to clock into. And the really worrying thing, I would say, for Boris Johnson yeah. isn't necessarily that, you know, these memes are being shared about. It's just that what they say, why are people sharing them? It's because they're believing in, them. you know, they're believing that, you know, when a meme is being shared that says he's a liar, it's because they think he is a liar. 
you know, you know, that's what's really yeah. dangerous for him at current moment with memes. So it's not really a case of all publicity is good publicity when it comes to memes, because you no, know, so, sometimes yeah, humor can really cut to the chase, can't it? Definitely. I mean, it's just, you know, it's the same as what you said before with like satire. You know, satire mm. is hundreds of years old. But, you know, when satire was saying something really bad about you, which was resonating with the public, that you should be worried you know, because that's what the public are thinking. And that's one of the really interesting things about memes um, and why I research them in my own way yeah. is that ultimately you can tell a lot by what the public are thinking, by what they're sharing. Yes. Um, and when we look at some of the memes that have been shared about Boris Johnson now, you know, if I was Boris Johnson, I would be worried, um, you know, because this is what people are thinking, especially kind of younger generations. Fascinating stuff. Well, listen, Dr. Lim, great to talk to you this morning. Please keep in Thank touch. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. It's not quiet on the political front, so <laughs> there's lots to talk <laughs> about. That is then Dr. Liam McLaughlin, lecturer in politics at the University of Manchester. And as you've heard, he published a paper titled By Any Memes Necessary. Very zeitgeist, very where we are at the moment. Now, on the way, Erica will be here with the great 